It's time for tempera. Today we will be learning to use tempera paint in the painting studio. Tempera paint is thick, bright, and opaque. Op opaque means solid, not see-through. And with tempera paint, you don't have to use water to activate it like you do with watercolors. Because tempera paint is thick, it's really difficult to create small paintings with a lot of details. So we go big. You can create big images with large, bold details like this big blue cat. Today, we are going to be painting on brown paper bags. We're reusing them as part of our unit on sustainability. Okay, let's get started. Think of something that'll be interesting if you draw it large. You can develop a new idea or you can use a drawing that you've created in art before. I'm using a lizard that third grade artist JD created. Thanks, JD. I use white chalk to draw the basic shapes and sketch lightly first. And then when I'm sure that I have what I want, I go back over it so that I can see it much more easily. Oh, if I mess up, I can take and rub my finger on the brown paper and it'll smudge away the chalk and I can redraw something. After I'm finished with the chalk pastel, I'm ready for oil pastel. I'm using pastels because they have a thick tip, which keeps me from getting too small and detailed. I wanna stay big and graphic with my tempera. I'm tracing over the chalk lines using the colors of oil pastels um, that I intend to paint the sections of my lizard. Okay, take a dip into the tempera paint. I like to go along the edge of the area I'm painting before I paint inside. I use smooth strokes. I don't want to leave any globs of paint. I dip in and get a little more paint as needed. I never want to have paint dripping off my brush when I take it over to my paper. Never need that much on it. I'm going to work my way around the green section of the lizard. On the tail, I'm just going to paint over the stripes I drew. I'll paint those on top with the orange later. Yes, it's time to wash the brush. I'm holding on to my bowl and keeping the bristles on the bottom of the bowl, going back and forth, and then I dry it on my paper towel. I may have to go rinse it out a second time if I see color still showing up. And with tempera, dry, dry your brush. Okay, ready for a new color. I dip into my new color and begin painting. Time to wash my brush out again, back and forth. And I get ready and dry it off. And it looks good. Rinse and dry, oh, dry. All right, my green isn't dry completely, but it's enough where I can carefully paint my spots. I really wanna make sure that I smooth these out and not leave lumps. So I get just a little paint on my brush and I keep the brush up on the tip of the brush so I have um, control and can do as small of a detail as temper can handle. All right, I'm gonna use this thick brush to make my stripes on the tail. That way I can do them in one brush stroke.
Okay, back to the detail brush, the small brush for the tongue. This lizard's getting ready to lick its eye. Do you know that geckos lack movable eyelids like we have? And when they want to moisten or clean their eye, they lick it. And I'm on my final colors. And rinse. Dry. And new color. And I'm finished. I can't wait to see your temper paintings. Remember, go big.